Hi, and welcome. I'm Drew Delaware. I'm a contradance caller based in Toronto, Canada. I've been calling at virtual contradances alongside other callers who are all volunteering to help support our musicians during a difficult time. It struck me that I could further help those musicians by making recorded dances available to those who love to dance. While virtual dances are not the same as dancing in a hall with a hundred or so amazing people, it has brought much joy to folks who have missed contra dancing. And it is strangely fun in its own little way. As a caller, it's been fun to obsess over the nuances of something completely new, adjusting dances so they don't progress, decreasing the amount of swings and clockwise motion, finding movement patterns that are fun in a solo or couple orientation. I've been geeking out, figuring it all out with others in the community. You know, they say constraints breed creativity. It has certainly been true. And so, welcome to this big experiment, Contra On Demand. Will anyone show up to my On Demand dance hall? I don't know, but if you're watching now, Hey, hi, and thanks for showing up. Okay, so I've got a few things to help make your virtual dance experience more enjoyable. First of all, contra dancing virtually requires a solid understanding of contra dance moves. So I'll be assuming you're an intermediate or advanced dancer, keeping walkthroughs crisp and only explaining things when they're unusual or worth explanation. If you're a beginner or you've never danced Contra, you might find it difficult to follow along, but hey, give it a try anyway, because no one will see and you can do whatever you want. You may notice that callers for virtual dances call the dance all the way through. One of the things we've learned is that it is necessary when you don't have other people as visual or physical cues for what happens next. So my calls will shorten, but you'll hear them throughout each tune. Now let's talk about dancing with ghosts. If you're dancing solo, your partner will be a ghost. Think of them as really friendly and supportive. And because you're not swinging with someone to look at, you might find that you get dizzier than you would otherwise. If that's the case, one thing you can do is swing with your hand in front of your eyes about where your partner would be. Looks like this. This trick helped me a lot. You can also modify any choreography. You won't mess anyone up. And the ghosts, they won't mind. For instance, you could turn a swing into an alamand or a do, -si -do if you prefer. Slide instead of spin for your petronellas. These minor adjustments can make a big difference. Now, if you're dancing as a couple, you've got some options too. You can modify any of my choreography to dance more of it together, or just dance it as called interacting with our friendly imaginary dancers for the neighbor interactions. It's all up to you. No one will see, no one will judge. A neighbor swing, for example, could be uh, turned into a partner swing across the set as long as you know where to continue the dance from when you're done. Because this is on demand, you can also take breaks whenever you want. So play a dance through as a one big marathon or hit pause any time to rest before continuing with the next. Clear a nice big space for yourself and make sure you don't have any trip hazards like cords or cats. The progressions are eliminated from the dances, so you don't end up in your kitchen or your bathroom by the time you're done. I also minimize any movement outside the immediate set. It will happen, but it will be easily contained in your living room. In Toronto, we've switched to gender-free terms, and so I'll be calling dances with larks and robins in place of gents and ladies. I considered doing a set of each because I know many of you have preferences for gents and ladies, but that's double the work. As more of our communities move to Larks and Robins for their calls, perhaps this is an opportunity for you to experience it and even see what it's like switching roles in the comfort of your own home as well. So feel free to play. If you're not familiar with Larks and Robins, remember that Larks are on the left, 
and robins are on the right. Lastly, I will occasionally refer to the screen to help you orient yourself in the hall. Much of the time it doesn't matter, so do what you like, but if it does matter, I'll let you know at the start of the walkthrough. Generally, I think it's nice to face the screen as if it's the stage, and in this video series, you'll have both me and the band on screen at the same time. So in a duple improper dance, consider starting the dance facing the screen so that you're couple number two facing up the hall. In a Beckett dance, consider starting on the left side of the screen, facing the wall on the right side of the screen. All right, so that's my welcome and my intro. From here, you can venture off to any of the playlists I've posted. Lose yourself in the amazing music of our contra dance bands while exploring some great dance sequences. Enjoy, and I'll look forward to guiding you through some fun dances in your very own dance hall very soon.